Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Panchasu, the mighty mix spammer. And I really need a hack. Like right now I just I need a hack. I want a hack. As simple as that. Problem is it's rather difficult to have a hack when you are home alone like I am right now and when you live in a village. I mean really I would I might as well just go out to the, into the streets and hug the first person I see. I forgot to script ten. Whatever. Hug the first person I see, and this would most likely just be a cow. And uh, because there isn't really anything else in here. Not exactly ideal. Besides, I probably wouldn't even find a cow anyway, because it is still there's still quite a bit of snow in Poland, and those cows are probably hiding from it. Not really surprising, I guess they like a little bit when it's a little bit warmer and when they have something to eat. But whatever. I guess this is because I mean I feel like this because I just some time ago, we got to your pilgrims, don't worry. Just some time ago, finished a meeting with my friends, or other friend, my best friend. And every time after those meetings, after they end, I just feel down. I think it's understandable, although I don't remember if I felt like this when I was still living, in fact, in a town. Living in a village is definitely much harder. So, if you... Actually, I have a message for you, so I'm going to minimize the screen. If you have a daughter, or have a son, and you live in a major city, and you consider moving into a village, please, for the sake of your child, think twice. I'm not saying don't do this, I'm not you, I'm not you. I cannot decide what is best for you, of course. But think twice, think about your kids. It is very difficult, very difficult in fact, to keep any amount of social interaction when living in a village when there is nobody around you. Especially for a kid. I mean, even a guy like me who's... I'm in my 20s right now. And I still feel kind of overencumbered by the fact that if I want to meet somebody, I either have to travel many kilometers to Warsaw, or just schedule it like a week ahead so that somebody comes to my place. Not ideal, really not ideal. There is an even bus nearby anyway, which is even more difficult. So just think about it twice, I, please, just do so. Then again, I am about to leave to Seoul, <laughs> and it's going to be amazing, and I cannot wait, as simple as it. Anyway, I think that this is actually a pretty good time to, you know, be a little bit uplifted, start a first battle with pilgrims, in fact, they found a ship that is alone, a single piece ship which is separated from its fleet, and they're going to attack me with a bunch of missiles, those naps. I remember them using beams, now they switch to missiles because, Hey, why not? It's the newbish decision that they lack. I just hope that they're not going to be able to destroy my peace ship, because this would be mildly unfortunate. MILDLY UNFORTUNATE! Actually, this is a probably decent idea to right now say my... To paroge, to chalmo pilgrim, sarambutan, hockey shippen, kiten nanan, na teme kappa, sake sanam, mokanko ya. Non Jimmy of so man of so run pilgrim pilgrim run run Now to be quite honest I couldn't decide whenever I should try and do this in a monotone voice like I tried at the start or if I should try and sing it with an actual rhythm which I cannot skip anyway for which uh, option I went in the later stages of my singing right there I guess both apply but anyway I am kidding because I already feel a slightly uplifted also, you do not need to worry. I know how to get rid of bad mood if then uh, when you're finished meeting your friend and you wish he will stay here or she will stay here or you know how it goes. <clears throat> anyway, so what was I talking about? Oh yes, ways to lift up your mood. Well, the one I used right now because I was kind of peckish, not really hungry, but peckish, was quite frankly very simple. I just went to my freezer and grabbed. Uh, my, and grabbed some ice creams, and the combination I used was vanilla ice cream, mint ice cream, and let's call it a chocolate ice cream. It's not really a chocolate, it's called a truffle ice cream. Don't know why, but it is mostly chocolate. Also, there are chocolate pieces in the mint ice cream as well. So, this artificially makes me feel happy because it makes me, my body rather, produce a whole lot of those hormones of happiness, and thus I already feel actually a little bit better. Although this could be the death of pigrins, let's face it, I like killing them. 
Oh, sorry, I drew it all over myself. Like, how embarrassing. Good thing I did not have a webcam. OMG, this would be so pathetic. I would not want to have a webcam. And in fact, I do have a webcam. It's just somewhere sitting in a box for how I have no idea how many years and I never used it. And I have no intention to do so. Anyway, this hero, what do I want to give this hero? That's actually a pretty good question because I don't quite remember. Grand Pounder would be a nice thing, but was there something specific I was trying to get? I think this may have been in the commander trait. I mean, I remember commander in chief. I wanted that. Ultimate defense is a very, very powerful card. But actually, does he have dust barrier? Can he even get dust barrier? No, he cannot. So I should consider taking ultimate defense for this guy to have an alternative to illusion, which is my favorite card of all times, to be quite honest. Maybe it's, let's be honest, it's mostly because of the bunny. I mean, who doesn't like bunnies? I like bunnies, they are cute and adorable creatures, and there's plenty of them nearby my house. So I guess those are some of the advantages of living in a village. You know, it's not all bad, it's just a very annoying to live in a village. Anyway, what do I want? Oh, I remember now. I wanted to give him the fast reboot ability. That's probably a very good thing to have, so I'm gonna stick with this idea. Also, somebody is invading Gobris. It would be nice if this would take me to the system, which is under invasion. Under invasion? Oh, I just moved away from them to attack Ezel. How annoying. Can I make it back in time? I can. Although there's another fleet coming, I do have, however, the ability to tele teleport between my connected wormholes, so it should not be a problem. Uh, shall we see hostilities, or maybe even have some tea? Decisions, decisions. So, Horish offered me two systems for peace. Also, by the way, off camera, I was actually able to get a Pollux because Ami I noticed that Amiibos were kind enough to leave it to me. So, you know, I kind of started doing that. Ah, uh, Pickers! You out of your mind, refuse. <laughs> I. Not Pilgrims, I'm sorry, Horatio. I still want them dead because hey, why not? And I want this home system. So, anyway, a lot of production has finished and there's a lot of freedom fighters, which makes me rather. feel rather good. I actually. This cast was a very good idea to. you know, increase my mood capacity. My mood capacity, what on earth am I talking about? To make me feel a little bit happier. Also, not sure if you know this, I'm gonna crack the volume just for a little bit. Let's hope I will not forget to turn it down before a battle. Do you listen to the music? Listen closely. Do you hear that? Listen again. It took me around 300 hours of playing Endless Space to notice that... Am I recording? Whew, I am, I'm sorry, I, I had a heart attack. To notice that... The music changes when you go between menus. It is in fact slightly different. Which is amazing! And that was a really weird voice. Anyway, my fleet of peace 2.0 is under attack. It's I'm most likely going to fall. I mean the enemy only has two dreadnoughts, but those peace ships are extraordinary or they are of a very odd design. And they are used to use like beams. I don't have anything against beams, but the enemy has loads and loads of shields. So I'm most likely going to witness my annihilation. Which is okay, I have plenty of people to replace my dying... My dying breed? That wouldn't be right, because I'm... I have the most population in the entire galaxy, so I'm definitely not dying! So anyway, I'm definitely gonna die. So what I do want to do is maybe something that counters sabotage and is offensive. There isn't anything like that. So I'm gonna go for tactics and try and at least, you know, try and get, get through the enemy's uh, beams. Now, unfortunately, they also increase the efficiency of the shields, which kinda actually does it well, completely negate my card. How effective is that? 40% efficiency of shields, so it doesn't necessarily mean they completely negate it. If I were to deal damage, then I'm still going to deal damage, and I'm going to, in fact, deal more damage than I would before. But if I were not to deal damage, then I'm not going to deal any damage anyway. So, energy absorption, not a very bad idea to go for the enemy anyway. Now, I went for adaptive strategy again, and I think that I might be able to do sun damage. I mean, medium range is the phase when your beams are most effective. Also, I forgot to stop my timer! Hate when that happens. And actually, yeah, I did, it does, did look like my beams got through and actually hit the enemy, but it wasn't as optimal as I hoped. In fact, some of the shields are still walking, I can't see them. And I could hear them as well, so it's kind of weird like that. Anyway, the battle has ended. Unsurprisingly, I lost, and the enemy didn't really sustain any casualties. If they did, then they repaired them immediately. 
but this was to be expected, so I'm not too annoyed at all. Those are very, very old designs that I had right here, trying to capture the system. Also, I love the Hishun Dreadnoughts. They, they remind me of Atreides from Emperor, the Battle for Dune. I told you all about, about this already, but it was in like five playthroughs ago, <laughs> so you may have forgotten. Anyway, this... yeah, I know, a lost battle happens. My hero leveled up, which is very nice. I'm not sure what I'm going to give him, because I don't need him to have anything. Don't I? Let's see. Uh, well, I want something that makes a good governor, when there is nothing like that in the adventure tree. Doesn't look like it. Maybe hyper-driven, but, you know, hyper-driven. Actually, I already have hyper-driven. Driven. And Administrator, I have like everything as well. I could go for Emergency Preparedness, just to be, you know, prepared. I could go for some extra percentage of food, if I ever needed to. Uh, yeah, why not go for plus 20% food on system? I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm maxed out on this guy's system because he's on my home system's pack. But in case I'm not, I, you know, I can always shout at people, right? And this, yeah, I'm maxed out. Oh well, happens, I guess. Yeah. Anything else that requires my attention? Yeah, there's still some systems that do. War done, you say. Oh, I never did actually do anything with you. That's that's okay, in fact. You know what? You're gonna make some more ships for me. Because I feel like asking you to do so and you're going to comply. Because I make you comply. I am this kind of tyrant. Actually I'm not really a tyrant, I'm saving my people, so if anything I'm a savior. A general ruling the Emperor with an iron fist. But I am a saver. That's actually how I call myself, and it makes me feel good. <laughs> kind of pathetic as well, but good nevertheless. Okay, this system, why not give it more whole construction and war game center? Because I feel like doing so. Again, I want even more ships, although the amount of ships I have already is quite frankly ridiculous. It's ridic. Did I colonize any planets? Doesn't look like it. I don't think I missed anything, so that's good to know. Let's finish the movement of all my fleets. And oh, just in case one of you asks, why didn't I listen to Sonia Shida, also known as Girls' Generation, in order to, you know, remove my bad mood? That's a good question, and I know how to answer it, in fact. That's very simple. I was, as I said, peckish. And eating ice cream was a good decision, because not only it actually got rid of my bad mood, I already almost feel okay right now. In fact, I kinda do feel okay, which is amazing. But also now I do not feel like I need to eat, which is amazing in and of itself. And also I could watch Total Biscuit's video while eating ice cream. So far I love his WTF is Bioshock Infinite. I hate when people go... I'm sorry, I know I should go to the gameplay. I'll try to talk and do stuff at the same time, which is difficult, but I'll try. I hate when people are overhyped by some kind of game and they are willing to not notice the flaws just because the game is so good that you actually do not notice the flaws that are actually there. It doesn't even have to be good, it just has to feel good, feel great. It was as TB said, and he said very well. It was the same case with Skyrim, and the same case in many other cases. <laughs> that was a very poor sentence, but hey, we will go with that. You just uh, actually... You know what, how about we start incorporating... By the way, it's a new fleet name, I'm not sure if you noticed. <laughs> How about we start incorporating my Freedom Fighters into my piece design? So, you just said, I'm going to be mad with my Freedom Fighters. There we go. And now, the beauty is going to start! The beauty is going to start. I'm not sure what does that mean, but I went for it. And if, you know what? How about we give this fleet a test? I mean, I do not have a lot of Freedom Fighters in here just yet, but I still can throw this hero with just a couple of Freedom Fighters to test their metal into Gobras and see how he does. If the enemy does not attack me, then I can reinforce this with even more, you know, uh, Freedom Fighters, and it doesn't look like they did attack me. Also, before I forget, I should have done this before I finished the 10. I should have done this off camera, but I forgot. I need more flag, because the enemy now... Uh, I cannot really have more flag, that's the problem, though. Well, if I resign from beams again, which... I mean shields again, which is very very not a cool thing to do, then I actually can go for some flak, but then I'm more exposed against, you know, beams. I mean, I did go for shields, I did not show no, but those are the worst shields ever you can get. Uh, there are some sort of shields, so they are not so completely ineffective, but look at that. 15 laser damage absorbed per 10, as opposed to 110. 
It's a big difference in case you were wondering. A really, really big one. Although I still believe it's better than plus 64 HP. So I'm gonna go with that. Also, do, do those ships have any beams? They do not. So you know what? Get rid of that. I want to have at least a representative beam. And I cannot. <laughs> what was that voice? <laughs> I'm sorry, I know I'm kind of weird and random at times, that's just me. Anyway, I do want my Collapsor Beam to be just a representative of my overall beam community. And now I'm completely exposed against beam weapons, so you know what, I'm gonna install additional beam and then be completely exposed against kinetics, because kinetics are less threatening to a missile heavy fleet than beams are. Beams actually can, in some rare scenarios, counter the beams. Although I wish the devs would have given us more opportunities to, for example, have a kinetic heavy fleet that is capable of withstanding, of, of surviving an assault of missiles. For example, stuff like I'm gonna show you in a second, but I need to make sure everything is nice. Now, uh, yeah, one representative beam, I like this. Anyway, for example, let's have a quick look at the battle action. You see the camouflage, right? So the idea is you sacrifice some of your kinetic damage so that you would have more powerful anti-missile. What I would like to have is just a flat-out transfusion from the kinetics to missiles. So let's say you have imaginative man numbers, okay? Let's say I have 200 military power in kinetics, and then I can use some kind of battle cap to transfer, let's say, 50% of that amount into anti-missiles. Because flag defense are essentially kinetics. You are shooting the missiles before they hit you, right? So I only fire half of my kinetics, but I magically, quote-unquote, gain some extra anti-missiles. This kind of battle card I would like. Camouflage is good, but I think you understand the limitation of this kind of card and why I would like to have an alternative which works similarly but not the same. In fact, I would love it if some dev was watching this and got an idea from that, but I think all the devs aren't really watching my videos. I'm almost certain that at least one of them I know which one, but I'm not gonna say. Watched at least one of my videos, but this was very long ago, and I do not know if any other dev has ever watched any of my other newer videos. Although it is possible that they watched my Happy Birthday and Endless Space Giro video, because, you know, it was a nice video I made that made probably... Well, in fact, it probably made only a single person <laughs> really happy because there was a single winner, but you know what I'm trying to say. Anyway, now I'm trying to merge my fleets. Oh, and I forgot that I also wanted to retrofit my peace ships because I am still producing peace ships. Also, I'm not sure even if I even show, shown it to you guys. I don't think I did. Yeah, I changed production on pretty much everything. I'm spamming freedom fighters. There are like two or three systems that are still making peace ships just to make, you know, calls of every single fleet. I want every fleet to have one peace ship and then a bunch of freedom fighters. More or less. Obviously, with the amount of peace ships I have right now, it's not gonna be a possible, and it'll be quite honest, even a worthwhile thing to try to achieve, but you know how it goes. Anyway, you just said, could I upgrade you? Why did I want to come here? Oh, yes, more flag. So, let's resign from. Yeah, four velocity converters is good, and now again, 19 super death ammo is actually way better. Am I willing to sacrifice. Nah, just plus one flag is good. Also, I would have plus 11. 11 is a nice number. I don't know why, but it is a nice number. Anyway, now I have a bajillion of fleets everywhere. So, let's see. I'm gonna send, like, four more freedom fighters to join the fight on Gobris. And, oh, actually, they are not close enough. Where are they, anyway? No, seriously, where are the freedom fighters I just sent? Are they, like, over here? Are those the ones? No. Did they just make it to Spark? No. Where are they? They definitely entered to a wormhole, didn't they? I think they did. Unless they didn't. Are they on Gobbies and I missed them? Oh, now they are. It just took them a while. Okay, never mind. I don't know how the population works. Maybe there's a delay. Like a ping or something. Okay, that's good to know. Right, I'm gonna leave a single piece ship in this fleet. The one that has more experience. Those both guys have the same amount. But let's go for the middle one. And actually, no, wait a second. There we go, and now those two are gonna be separate, and you did is going to be merged with beta, and this is the kind of fleet that I'm going to try and have for the most time. Sai, you just hide in a hangar just in case someone tries to attack you. And now, let the fun part begin. The enemy doesn't have the most impressive fleet, but apparently they still have a lot of military power. Nowhere near enough, I might say. Nowhere near enough. They are going to die, and they're going to love it. Let me drink some juice, though, because I feel like I need to. I 
I moved back to my brandy glass, by the way. Sadly, I did not have my juice in my refrigerator. It forced me to use ice cubes to make it cool. Not quite the same effect, because it is kind of a little bit more watery and whatnot. In a hat, girls. Anyway, what I want... I, I don't remember. I'm gonna go for illusion because I like the effect, but I don't remember what I wanted to go for. Well, <laughs> if you ask me, it worked brilliantly. Anyway, those Freedom Fighters do not have any beams just yet. Only the newer versions actually have a single, you know, representat representative beam incorporated. That's okay, though. I still have a lot of missiles, and let's see how well my Freedom Fighters are going to do. In fact, I also need some more illusions. Well, with the illusion card, that's no surprise that I... I'm sorry, that I took almost no damage. I mean, it was illusion after all. Now we kind of counter each other. But that's okay. So, for the most part, this fleet seems to be working extraordinarily fine, right? Wrong. Right now, as I said, I have illusion cards because I have a level 17 hero. Do you know how much of a difference he makes? A huge amount. Also, beams very useful. Finished a single ship that has left alive after the volume of missiles. This is why you also may need secondary weapons on your fleet. I'm trying to justify the, fly the fact that I like lasers, let's be honest. Anyway. Level 17 hero, you know how much of a difference he makes? I'm gonna show it to ya. I have no problems with showing it to ya. Have a look at that. He increases my minimal and maximum damage by 56%. He makes interception evasion of fleet weapons. I have no idea what this is, but it is increased by a vast majority of amount. He also makes me intercept 32% more weapons of any description. So that's a 30% increase. A little bit less, but just a tiny little bit. That's a lot, in case you were wondering. So, he's a rather powerful hero, just because of that. Now, I can have this fleet back, thank you. My hero, well, I just leveled him up, so that's no news to me. And I think that it looks, looks like our right flank is, for the most part, steady. Although, I will need somebody to guard the borders of Gobris, because it seems like... A war that many people want to see dead, so I'm gonna send a bunch of freedom fighters over there. If I have a struggling peace ship, I'm gonna send it as, as well. Although, if I remember correctly, I do have an abundance of peace ships over there. Anyway, you do say, uh, yeah, you just auto this thing without even any battle cards. Why would I choose any? Okay, you do say, uh, yeah, I know. He won? I mean, he survived? That's. Uh, that's annoying, but. Let us pursue him. Let us do so. Let's make sure he doesn't run away and let's finally kill him, which takes way longer than it should. Now let's send the remaining of my freedom fighters to Micro because it looks like. Well, I just need to keep reinforcing Micro at all times. I do need to take care of Iza. And in fact, what I might do is just send my U Dead fleet back into Miza. So this would suggest that I may indeed want to match those fleets. And this is a very nice defensive fleet. Yeah, actually I'm gonna leave two pieces in this fleet, why not you decide just be disbanded and hide in a hangar because that's the safest thing for you to do. Another freedom fighter, you go to my car again. I said you go to my car again, I mean as well, not again. What was I talking about? Another ship in a hangar. Man, I have a lot of hangars. It's a good thing you don't have to pay for hangar space because otherwise I would be bankrupt probably. And yeah, a lot of fleets over here. Most of them are freedom fighters though, so it's fairly easy. Oh, unless you misclick to just merge them together and have a very very big hefty amount of ships in a single fleet. Which I like by quite a lot. I like it by quite a lot. Where's my where are my English skills? I know they are uh, they aren't the greatest by any stretch of the imagination. But still, I would like to be decent with English. Also, actually, I do have a peace ship over here. But I may need to reinforce Shaddai, because I'm about to have a battle over there without a hero. Never mind. Uh, yeah, definitely never mind. So Shaddai is going to fall. There are other ships over there that are moving in this general direction, but I also need Shaddai to fall a little bit faster, so I am going to reinforce it with a bunch of PS 8.0s. As I said, I'll deal with this fleet with a hero. The enemy also has a hero, so it's only logical to use a hero against a hero. If you ask me, that is. Okay, you got the system, you don't have to. I think the enemy is still going to attack those ships rather than the others anyway, but that's something at least, right? And I think that we are done with this stand. Now, it's really annoying, I forgot to set my timer because it says it passed 15, that it has been 15 minutes since I started my timer. 
Problem is, I do not know when I started my timer. I could pause the recording and go and check. But that's hardly the thing I was hoping for, right? Alright, let's measure the two together. Actually, did I... No, never mind. For a second, I thought that I can have more ships in a fleet, but I cannot. I still do not have this upgrade. I am about to get Endless Empire, which, as I said, I need to have as a precautionary measure. It is very important. Also, I need to explain this thing to you, especially this one. I have only a single piece of it learn, learn. You know, wanna know why? Well, let's end the turn while I, ask, while I explain to why I did this. So, so far, this entire Templar playthrough, for some reasons, well, does kinda turn it itself into a campaign against pilgrims. It was my revenge mission when I just wanted to get my revenge on the pilgrims. And I still want, I still hate them, and I still want them to run. So that's pretty much all there was to that. And even though if I were to kill the pilgrims, and if they were to die, and then I would still have to face a powerful empire of uh, Hisho, then it wouldn't be nearly as exciting for me. Because the pilgrims would be dead, and I couldn't kill them anymore! How horrible would be that? I wouldn't be able to kill my favorite killing buddies. <laughs> no, I'm actually kind of serious. So, this video cast, I didn't quite feel felt like I have the strength for it. But next one is going to be crazy, because then I'm gonna actually make a power hour video. Maybe even power double hour or triple hour, as long as it takes. And I'm gonna keep continuously record until I beat this game. At this particular playthrough, I mean. And... I, then, I will, in fact, allow myself to conquer pilgrims. Only then, though. Alrighty then. And I have something prepared for that as well. So anyway, something... Oh, come on! This is something that everybody hates. Corruption and nepotism scandal. It decreases everything, and they do mean everything, by 10% and 20% your approval. Fortunately, since I have such a powerful empire, I don't care as much as others do because I have a lot of tech that kind of mitigates the damage I just sustained because of this nepotism scandal thingy. But it's still going to be very annoying because it is going to prolong the conquest of the enemy. I mean, ridiculously, ri think of that. My industry is decreased by 10%. So that's 35.8. Might not look like a lot compared to 1,130 and 5, but it's still quite a lot. In my honest impression, at the very least. So, you know. Anyway, the enemy is attacking at Gobris. So, yeah, obviously they are they're attacking the weaker fleet, which was to be expected. A very annoying, in fact, I should have stored them in a hangar. But, you know, I'm gonna go into manual and I'm going to engage, because I'm the boss. You know what? I'm reaching the 20 minute mark, so I'm also willing to believe that I'm well, somewhere around the half an hour minute mark, which is the length I want to go for with my videos, like all of them. Obviously, I know I just said that the next video I make is going to be kind of power hour ish, because it is going to be extremely long and stuff like that, but you know, that's the exception. I already explained to you why. I already know that this video, even though obviously I will have to put a lot more effort in a video that lasts for like two hours long, and my throat is going to hate me for that, or oh, despite this all effort, this video is actually going to get less views than, for example, this video. Why? Because people avoid videos that are too long. That's something I can see from the statistics, that's my personal experience. Also, this fleet composition seems extraordinarily awesome, they really cannot do a thing. But it's not like HP is in any effect. I don't think the enemy was actually able to go for my flag defense. And regardless of what happened, I still feel pretty amazing about myself. We can have a call. Well, those are odd missiles though, so we shouldn't judge just by, you know, this thing. So let's low watch closely. Hope that the camera stays at the proper angle. Yeah, most of the things attack my piece and the other missiles that got to my freedom fighters, they actually did not break through my flag defense. And the enemy is cowardly enough to retreat. Now, missiles do not work when the enemy retreats, only beams do, but fortunately it was enough to blow something up as I can see, maybe I'll even deal some damage to those two guys, Most, more likely though, I will not, and they will run away, like the cheap cards, they are, you, actually no, it's reserved for the pilgrims, I'm not gonna use my awesome line for the he show. I said, I say my awesome line, even though I know it is not remotely awesome, but you know how it goes, anyway, you do say, actually, I need to think about this, because I wanted to kill Izar. Where's this he enemy hero on Izar? 
Did the kid run away? It does look like he did, didn't he? Well, first of all, let's kill this guy because he's annoying. And can you please die already? It's very difficult to kill him because, remember, I can only use beams when he tries to retreat. But fortunately, finally, he died. Took him forever. Now, Endless Empire is here. You need five copies of uh, Invulnerable Empire structure in order to win a game. As simple as that. It is also going to increase your upper on each system by two, which is not a lot at all. <laughs> but what I'm going to do, as I said many times before, I'm going to make four copies of that. Not five to win the game, four. So in case anybody else goes for the exact same thing on me, I will have a head start. Also look at that, six tests. It does take a while, so better to start early. As simple as that. In fact, I don't even need to queue up my Freedom Fighters because that's what those systems are going to do for the next 20 billion turns. In fact, I can, however, speed this upgrade up. I could maybe construct two invulnerable empires at once. I do want to save my money. In case I need to, you know, in case the enemy does go for the invulnerable empire as well, and let's say he in somehow magically appears that he's got a lot of them and I will not be able to make a fifth one before the enemy does, then I want to have enough money to actually buy out a copy of that. As simple as that. It is going to cost more on a system that has less production, so maybe I should leave a copy, I mean, lack of a copy on my most powerful system, but then again, you know, it's... it's, a piss, it's a I know, I know it was not the most coherent thing I could have said, but I just did deal with it. Anyway, my dear hero, you're gonna get cyber skilled and now I have no idea what to give to you because it's not like you need anything else. Although smart investor, I guess, doesn't hurt. Saving business uh, free is actually fairly good considering the amount of wood I have, so I'm gonna go for that. Singles for saving business too and saving business, actually never mind, I cannot go for it anyway, anymore. So that's good. So I did change production a little bit, actually, I might as well, usually I do this off camera, but since there's not a lot of production to upgrade, I might as well do this on camera and explain what I, and what I do. Although so far, although, although right now those are fairly obvious things to do, I mean, look at that, I'm just increasing the amount of people I can have on this system, so that, you know, it is better, as simple as that. What else I'm going to, going to do, well, there's one more system that just finished not by rank shelling, and those are no rings, they look kinda cool. So what I'm gonna have is invulnerable, no. <laughs> in fact, this would take not a long time at all. Oh, wow, I have to be careful not to misclick and accidentally <laughs> win the game. This would be kind of awful. I know you can still keep playing when you win the game, but, you know, it's not about that. You know how it goes. Anyway, you do so uh, actually, you go for that. And you make me some more freedom fighters, because I'm gonna need them. My four most constructive systems are busy making invulnerable empire. As simple as that. Anyway, is it, did it pop out? Well, I can say that I'm at 0%, so it is a thing. And people will be notified when I reach like 20%, I believe. So that's good to know. Then probably people will start attacking me even more heavily than they already did. But it's not really something that troubles me too much. Alright, let's use my beta fleet to destroy this fleet. Then I'm gonna move the hero fleet to the other system where I promised I would move him. Yeah, there's no, there's little danger here. Although, yeah, there's a little danger here. Although, no, I'm just gonna stop. And I'm going to finish recording after this battle, probably, because... Yeah, it has been long enough. And as I said, statistics show and prove that people hate long videos. And it is actually true. As simple as that, there's little to argue with, with that. So, yeah, simple as that. Also, that's something that... You ever wonder why people often make three 10 minutes videos instead of one half an hour video? That's simple. Instead of getting 20 views, or rather in most people cases, 2,000 views on half an hour videos, you get 2,000 views on each of your 10 minute videos. So that's uh, so that's 6,000 views in total. Isn't it better? Of course it is! That's why people make short videos. Because they want to make more advert revenue. I do not necessarily disagree with it, as long as people make at least 15 minutes or 20. Actually, 20 is the minimum, in my opinion, to be... Consumer friendly, let's say. It's not really a consumer thing, you're watching this. We are watching this because it's... it's We're not paying for this, we are not entitled to anything. But 20 minute videos, or maybe it's 15 minute videos, are a good balance. Also, the enemy started using kinetics! As... well... yeah, they did! Just as I moved away from deflectors, so... That's annoying, it looks like my fleet composition did not quite work out. Also, in fact, those freedom fighters... They do not even have decreased deflectors. 
So that's a little bit scary considering, isn't it? Also, we are at melee phase already. I didn't notice that. I thought that I'm going to win by the long range, and that's indeed not the case. Very, very surprising. It, it does look amazing as well, but, well, that's good to know. What I'm going to do right now is obviously install a little, a little bit more deflectors, and that's about it, probably. I will resign from some of the deflectors, because he's just stupid. His blue missiles are way better than the kinetics uh, he's using right now, no matter how you calculate this. As simple as that. Anyway, I think it's a good po uh, moment to end our recording, so I'm gonna say my outro. It was Pantros of the Mighty Mix Power. If you somehow managed to enjoy my video cast, then please, by all means, like it, maybe even subscribe to my channel if you wish to see more. Also, please do leave a comment, because I enjoy reading them, and they help me out a great deal. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you online.